Hey, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to IPL5. Today is day number four, the final day, Championship Sunday, as some may call it. My name is Optimus Tom, and joining me on the second stream is going to be Sir League of Studio. <laughs> There's the lighting. I'm, I was looking at the screen here. It's like, we're in the dark right now. Why, um, why can't they see us? Well, we're, we're well, part I'm, vampire. I'm lit now. You, you, you're in the dark. I'm sorry. But guys, My we have... Work. Oh, he did. No, apparently, yeah, it's that doesn't right. work, does it? I am, I'm the light, okay. I'm the light all of right, the stream, we'll have, anyway. we'll have to bunch up. Get closer, Tom, so you get in the light. Okay. okay. <laughs> but we have a hell of a match today. going to be TPA versus Moscow 5. The second time we've seen it in this tournament, and frankly, I mean, game one, we, it was group stages. We casted it, actually. That mm -hmm. was kind of a stomp. Just a little bit. I mean... M5, of course, they played Taipei Assassins in Season 2 Finals. It was a 2-1 victory for the Taipei Assassins, and they moved on. M5, they wanted their revenge. They wanted their vengeance upon TPA, and they didn't get it. And now TPA has fallen down to the loser's bracket, and M5's climbed their way back through it. And this is actually the loser's bracket semifinals. Whoever wins this is going to have to face the loser of Fnatic and World Elite, which will be going on in the main stage right now. So... Four teams left in the finals, or four teams left on this final day for uh, IPL5, and they are the toughest competition we've seen in basically any tournament yet to date. And of course, this is losers. Whoever loses, they go, well, maybe not home quite yet, they they get a, but they get a watch from the spectator seats, and that's not what they want to be. They want to be up on stage, hearing fans chant their team name as they try to obliterate and get to first. But this is going to be the fourth place match. Whoever loses goes to fourth place. A respectable place, to, to say the least, because, I mean, how many of these games could have been finals? It's Th basically this every right game could have been. Yeah. We've had, it's in the loser's bracket since the early rounds. We've had a Zubu Blaze and M5. TPA has fallen to the loser's bracket now. CLG EU was just eliminated last night from the loser's bracket by the Taipei Assassins. When you think of these names, you think of like potential season two championship teams. You think of people who've taken first place in multiple tournaments. You don't necessarily think of the fact that these guys are going to be in the loser's bracket from the early stages, yet let alone fighting for their tournament life on championship Sunday outside of the last match yeah this it's just so weird to see a team like azubu blaze they could have been so much farther but still it's such tight competition i gotta say mad props to moscow five azubu blaze was one of the teams they really wanted to defeat picks and bands have started though let's go on in twisted fate and olaf coming out already for moscow five evelyn being aimed straight at alex each none of that None of that Evelyn murdering, massacring that we've seen happen multiple times throughout this tournament because, man, Alex Heach is really good at Evelyn. Well, the thing is, too, now that Evelyn has been banned out, it's up to M5 to realize after this ban from TPA, where they are going to ban out the Rengar, that's going to be a point of contention between both of these teams. Both Stanley and Darian have shown excellent Rengar play, and they are going to ban out Toys' Orianna on top of Twisted Fate. Apparently, they're not too worried about that in Nivea. Now it's on TPA to decide do we ban out Diana? I don't think we've seen Alex each play Diana the entire tournament, but it's usually been banned out. They are going to take away Diamond Prox's Lee Sin. If they want to first pick that Diana, not only does it remove it from toys, but it gives it to Alex each, and we've seen what he can do with those AP mid assassins. And I have to say, I love the ban. So much really aimed at the, the mid lane. Like Evelyn and Alex each, Twisted Fate, Oriana aimed straight at toys. And it's all about kind of controlling those picks because, like, you know, before it used to be, you know, Froggen is that scary mid laner. Now it's everybody. Everybody is terrifying. Everybody can dominate and snowball. Uh, they can go for the mid lane pick right now because you do see what uh, Darian has picked up for Alex each, but at the same time, maybe they want to pick something riskier. Maybe they want to pick something that might be a little more susceptible susceptible to ganks. They want to see what Moscow 5 picks up first. Well, they do grab that Umumu away. Diamond Prox has been playing a lot of Umumu recently, and Zyra is going to be the pickup from Stanley on the Taipei Assassin side. Now, if this were M5 picking up Zyra, we could probably see that Alice each would be taking that into the middle lane. However, with the Taipei Assassins, potentially going to be the support pickup. So now we have that little dynamic where Alex each has played a lot of Zyra against Diana, and he's done it to very, very good success in this tournament. Has TPA adapted that style, and is it going to be toys on Zyra, or are they going to still potentially pick up that Anivia choice, which might not work the best against Diana because Anivia is going to be weak in the laning phase, pre-level 6. The wall really doesn't help if Alex each is going to be able to jump over it with his ultimate. So is Zyra going to be going into the mid lane, or is it going to be that support pick? We're going to have to see once the AD carry and support come out. And really, I got to say, I love mid lane Zyra against Diana. It, it works in lane perfectly because if Diana ever goes aggressive, ever tries to go in there, you, you lay down the Grasping Vines, you lay down Seedlings, she takes so much more damage in response she has to play passively. And she can farm, but the same thing keeps happening in team fights. We've seen Dianas, they'll start a team fight, use the ultimate to get in there, use uh, the pull just to lock everybody down to a small space so they can be AoE'd. 
but Zyra counters all that. If you try and follow through with Diana, Zyra's just going to lay down her ultimate, hit you all when you're trying to initiate with that pull, and it's a really strong counter. And looks like both teams are going for a lot of AoE with the Sona being picked up by Moscow 5, but Mundo going to be that tanky, beefy jungler for uh, Diamond Prox. And we did see them taking Mundo away from Taipei Assassins. Little Balls played exclusively Mundo and Skarner pretty much this entire tournament. I've seen last night he played two games of Mundo and one game of Skarner against CLG EU, and it worked extremely, extremely well. Taipei Assassins are going to respond with this. They have the Anivia pickup, and now locking in that misfortune, they were toying with the idea once again against CLG EU last night. Zyra and Misfortune, that is a hell of an aggressive bottom lane. Ghosty Pepper picked up his fan favorite Sona, but she's an extremely, extremely squishy carry. Most of the time, this is gonna, you're going to see this going with someone more along the lines of an Ezreal pickup, which is still on the table for Genja, but they've also been playing a lot of Ash. Ash is a very weak AD carry. She has, has no HP, she has a lot of range, so Sona and Ash would potentially have a lot of poke and they could outrange Misfortune, who has a little bit less range than most AD carries, but if they land those grassing roots from Zyra, a Make It Rain's going to come down from Misfortune. Once you get the double up and those auto attacks in, it could be potentially very dangerous. Looks like we're going to see the Corky coming out instead of the Ash, and I, it makes sense because Ash is someone who can't fight back, and she does have a slow, she does have higher range, but Misfortune does have Make It Rain, which is going to be a stronger slow earlier on in the game. For a shorter amount of time, of course, but that's all you need. You just need a, a few seconds. And so into Corky, a very poke-oriented lane. Use Phosphorus Bomb on Corky for just easy harass. Follow that up with an auto attack. At the same time, Sona uses her power cord and a Him about to really apply that DPS. So both lanes are going to be aggressive, just going to be different styles. TPA, if Zyra lands one Grasping Vines, if they get the, the seedlings down and they, they have the slow being applied to Sona, that can just be death. Sona's going to be so squishy, as you mentioned. It can just be one good catch for a first blood pretty easily. At the same time, uh, Corky and Sona, they're just going to be constantly going aggressive. If you ever uh, give them a break, they will auto-attack you. They will take you down your HP. And that's an Elise last pick. Hell yeah! That's Elise being locked in by Type A Assassins. First time I think we might actually see her played in the tournament. I know against oh, Curse uh, North America, she's been banned out very heavily. Yeah, Curse North America actually got a few picks of that in. Sometimes it went pretty terribly. TPA actually played against uh, Boy Boy's Elise. Uh, they were able to get a really good catch on him level 1, though, and he did not enjoy that game. <laughs> that, that was a game with a 4-minute top turret being taken down as Void Boy hit level 2 from Jungle Creeps. Uh, that doesn't sound like a very good predicament to be in. We're going to see if Stanley actually has his own Elise skills. We're going to have Jax versus Elise in the top lane, and most of the time... Alright, you've cast a lot of TSM tournaments here, Mr. Studio, and we've seen... Curse North America play a lot of Elise. Have you seen a Jax versus Elise? I have top seen lane? a lot of Jax versus Elise top lanes. It's a really, really weird lane because Jax, if he ever gets sustained damage onto Elise, he can kill her. He can kill her really easily, especially once he is level six with the ultimate. But up until that point, up until he gets a good long chase, up until Stanley has to just constantly run away from him, Elise has really good consistent harass. He's always going to be getting the uh, Q in spider form or in human form. Can always follow up with a spider form Q actually, and it's almost impossible to. Land and the stun if Elise just uh, switches to her spider form and just gets the hell out of there. So there's a lot Elise can do to beat Jax. There's a lot Jax can do once Elise is exposed to completely kill her, but you, you have to catch her. So would you say in the early stages of the matchup, potentially Elise has a little bit more harass on Jax? A little Jax bit more, yeah. Back? But it, it's a weird thing because the cooldown on Counter-Strike is a little bit uh, shorter than the cooldown on Elise's you know, escape in spider form, but only a little bit. So if, uh, there's a good opportunity for Darian to go in aggressive, try and catch her with that cooldown up. He can really do a lot of damage. It's just, you have to find the opening, and Stanley's probably going to be playing so defensively, he won't let that happen. All right, so we are getting into the loading screen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's M5 BenQ going up against the Taipei Assassins. Season 2 championship caliber matchup in the lower bracket semifinals of IPL5. Don't know how many times we've actually talked about how that is, you know, how that's relevant, how potentially awesome that it is that all these teams are actually in this in this tournament and had had to fight each other so hard that they're actually you know at the point where this is the lower bracket final i'm gonna be waiting on uh scumbag alex each actually to just get in they're gonna refresh the little setup so we have m5 versus tpa ladies and gentlemen here we are losers bracket semifinals studio we're looking across these teams right now we talked about the picks and bans but let's talk about what happens when these teams confront each other at level one level one a lot can go terribly wrong for either side stanley on the least does have a stun available to him but it's not really the most effective skill we'll probably start with his q or w depending on the circumstances uh m5 they have a little bit more of a solid level one fight so they might go aggressive but at the same same time it's going to be, you know, 
caution. Both teams don't really want to fight, that's why we see TPA just hanging around mid lane, looking to see if they invade from the side, but they don't want to be in the brush, they don't want to be anywhere they can be engaged on, and even M5, they're just kind of hanging around, spread out across the map, but not really going aggressive, just because there's so much on the line right now. One bad level one fight, you could lose this game, you don't want to be down a game, and just be one game away from being eliminated, taking fourth place, instead of advancing to at least third. None of these teams want that to happen. Both M5 and Taipei Assassins training extremely heavily for this tournament. We talked about how Moscow 5's manager said that they've been scrimming and they've been practicing almost 24-7 ever since they lost Tales of the Lane. We saw them in China go to those show matches and really show up World Elite, who has looked absolutely dominant this tournament. Taipei Assassins, of course, we've seen them in the Garena League. They've dropped, what, two matches entirely? And that's about it. We saw them win the Garena Championship. And being champions, they just don't want to give it at up. They want to keep that first place momentum that they've had. Every single tournament they've been in, even the Season 2 Championships, where a lot of people didn't expect it, kind of wrote them off, they still wound up winning that. So they want to keep that perception in people's minds. M5, though, they don't want to be the losers. Intentions are extremely high in this well, match. M5 is a team, they're definitely driven on emotion. They, they know that they can beat TP. They know they can definitely win this match. And they want to. They want to say, we took out the team that won Worlds. We took out the team that took us out at Worlds. We, are, we beat them, and we were better than them then. For that day, at least. I, I, they could take third place having beaten TP, and they would be satisfied. Not happy, but satisfied. And it, there's a lot in terms of just emotional strength there for uh, Moscow 5. At the same time, they have to make sure they don't get too aggressive. They don't just try too much, try to make too much happen in this game. It does look like for the first time in a long time, either of these teams are going to be going for a pretty standard lane matchup. AD carrying support going to be on the bottom lane. Misforging in Zyra. We've talked about how potentially dangerous that can be if Zyra is going to get a grasping roots on the Gosu Pepper Sona because she is extremely, extremely vulnerable to HP. We'll have to keep her eyes peeled down there for a little bit just to make sure. There goes the grasping roots out from Zyra already. Going over towards Genja. Mid lane, Anivia versus Diana. Harass going back and forth. Surprisingly, it's on the side of Toys as Alex is taking a bit of poke damage, but being the aggressive assassin assassin type mid player that he is, he's potentially going to have an early level advantage until at least level 6 or Toys gets that first blue buff. And then the top lane, Stanley going against Darian, Jax against Elise, like you said, the very interesting matchup. We also had Diamond Procs rearing his head as Mundo through the enemy jungle, getting a little counter jungling on early. So the matchups are going to be fairly even for the most part. Like bot lane, it's all about getting a good catch. And Mundo, though, heading towards that mid lane, could be looking for the gig, has the bandage toss. I mean, they may not be able to kill her, but they can at least force a flash. Here comes a threat. Little balls coming in. Flash is the bandage shot, so they do wind up getting that summoner spell down, so that means potentially a gank opportunity in the future. A gank opportunity, or toys even on Nivea. You don't really think of a Nivea strong early game, but if you land a flash frost, that's a lot of follow-up damage. And as you can see, Genja taking a lot of harass himself. The way this lane works is they may not go for an out outright kills. Actually, they're going for the outright kill now. Genja actually has to burn his flash away, getting the exhaust out. Vivi's going to come in trying to get first blood. Ignite's taking away. He has to flash away. His exhaust goes down. But first blood will go to Misfortune from the exhaust. Can Ghost you Pepper turn this around? The mistake and Vivi are both extremely low. Grasping roots from Zyra is going to deter Ghost you Pepper. And TPA sneaks away with first blood. And that's how the lane works, though. Once they get that first harass, you saw Kork was already at half HP. When that Grasping Vines hit, if they get that damage off, if they just get one good poke, they can follow that up with a kill. And now that they have that kill, now that they have that extra first blood gold, there's a good chance they can keep going aggressive. As Diamond Prox now trying to aggressively counter jungle, there's not much that sad little balls can do with the uh, spike being used to pick up that big wolf. So we do have Dr. Muno continuing throughout his path in the jungle, just making Amuma's day even worse. Top lane here, we see the trade potential between Elise and Jax. Darian having to back off, being extremely close to that tower. Ooh, that exploding spell. Oh. Ooh, almost got the leaf strike away from that one, but he is going to want to take in a little bit of the damage here. Muno now taking his own jungle for once. And the opposite side, Little Balls is going to be securing his own rates. And now that we talked about it, first blood has already gone down. This mid lane matchup, I'm still very interested. With the flash being burned, you talked about it. Nivea can get aggressive onto Alex Each if he so chooses to. With that wall there, Alex Each does not yet have the ultimate in order to dash away from the wall and get around it. If you get a good wall off, if you hit level 6 and get that or get that flash frost off, combine it with the frostbite so you get the extra critical strike damage. Diana's in a bad spot. It won't, well, kind of. It, she takes a lot of pressure, but at the same time, she does have the shield. It's all about mana management. 
And that's what makes it tricky, because, oh, actually, Lowball's top lane looking for the gank. Gets a bandage toss on. Bandage toss, counter strike goes off from Jeff. Not going to get the stun from Stanley. <laughs> Jumping back in, getting a little bit of pain back on the little balls. With looking these aggressive. Like, all right, you guys can kill me anymore. I'm just going to go ahead and say hi. How you doing? Just give you a nice little bonk of the head and back off. And that's kind of, that's what you see really from top tier players. They're able to just apply pressure non-stop. It doesn't matter if they just got ganked. They're just in a bad situation. You know, apply a little, get a little damage off. Do something just to be mean because you can. We did see in the meantime, Alex, he's taking the wolves away that since Mundo took his raid, so he is going to try to keep up in that farm against Nibia. 36 compared to 44, so he is falling behind just a little bit, but we kind of expect that in the lane that has a Nibia in there. Oh, surprisingly though, bot lane, uh, Genja's at 34 CS, Tabebe's 24, so he's a little bit of an advantage there at the time. Uh, oh, Genja's taking a lot of damage though. Yeah, Genja's going to get out of there. Those plants going off the slow on top of that. Has to Valkyrie away. Ghosty Pepper also took a brunt of the damage from BB. They're going to continue the chase though. There's the Make It Rain to try to slow them down. Double up as well. Ghosty Pepper is going to take the damage. Genja does not get the bounce, but those flashes are down. Well, the flash on Genja is down. Ghosty Pepper still has it. He's still got a big target on his head. Yes, he has Valkyrie with the double slow potential and the root in place from the grasping, uh, grasping vines from Mistake. He is probably going to wind up going down if they wind up dropping that combo again. They're just going to keep looking at Genja. That's that's their focus just because he's taking the damage. Because of how Sona's heal uh, heals both herself and the target, they never really want to attack Sona because she'll just heal up. Genja taking a bit of pressure though. Look at just that chase. The, the damage from Impure shots really stacking up. Is, is Genja going down? He has got the Ignite taking away and he had the heal debuff. BB actually picks up yet another kill despite the Valkyrie away. You mentioned a really good point there. The um, Impure shots is going to reduce the healing that Sona gives him on top of the fact that Corky's not going to be able to chug through those health potions to survive those encounters. So Misfortune and Zyra, I'm liking it in the bottom lane. It's it's really working out effectively. I mean, they're just letting it happen. Stanley, they're taking a lot of damage top lane. Diamond Prox actually going in, as well as the Leaf Strike from Darian has to burn the flash away. No repel used there from Stanley to avoid. Just the flash, so he is going to wind up getting out of there alive. But that's a Summoner spell burned in the top lane, potentially giving a bit of the edge over to Darian, who still has both of his. And I don't think they expect that misfortune damage. They may not play this matchup quite, quite that often because Genja, he had the impure shot stacking on him. It doesn't fade away like a silver bolt does when someone attacks a different target. So he went forward, even though he had all those impure sh uh, shot stacks onto him, got poked again, and that was just enough. Just one more auto attack, and he got finished off with the ignite debuff. So they may not know the output potential of uh, Misfortune as other matchups. And it's it's definitely showing, because Bebe and Mystique are really taking nice little control in terms of kills in that bot lane. And now they have a higher CS advantage. I kind of like that as well. Like Misfortune with her impure, impure shots, she's actually not maxing it. She's maxing that double up first, so she's not getting potential trade damage she wants to. But look at this. Now we have the bullet time coming out. Genja taking a lot of damage here. Gozu Pepper's not going to be able to heal him up as much. Exhaust goes down onto Sona, trying to get away, using the Q to try to poke. Phosphorus Bomb and Flashes go off, a lot of trade damage coming, Ignite taking away on Mistake, but Zyra is going to survive. Zyra barely, so actually killing Zyra probably would have resulted in a kill on the Genja or to go to Pepper from that passive. But I mean, th that is the aggress aggressive nature of the light, not having Ignite, still using Exhaust of course, but it's really just too hard to deal with that consistent damage. Impure Shots, even though it's rank 1, it does add up fairly quickly, and the attack speed buff is what makes her such a good duelist early on. Later on, she does have some issues. Of course, the ultimate for Misfortune is channeled, so you can't auto-attack during it. So you, you do a lot of AoE, but you do sacrifice some of your single target damage. And, well, she has no escape. That can be a huge problem sometimes. So she is considered a weaker early game carry. Stanley going ahead, leaping out of there, going back aggressive onto Darian, because once that stun is down, he just applies all the pressure he can. Going back to that Misfortune matchup, those Impure Shots, every single time she attacked, it's stacking magic damage, which is something that a lot of these players have been running magic resistance per level on their glyphs. So unless we've had Genja picking up, you know, the flat magic resistance, we can see here, actually at 55 magic well, that's from Sona's the w, Sona though. aura. I'm assuming that means he has 42 flat as well. It was actually, no, it was 35, uh, 35. for the heal, so... I mean, Ghost of Pepper, he's just spamming that heal right now, trying to keep Genja healed, trying to keep him relevant. Equal CS, but that, that two kill lead does mean Beb is going to be have uh, an experience lead to have a lot more pressure to apply in terms of damage. Did see Little Balls poking his head in this mid lane. Alice each and Toys, both with their respective blue buffs, both of them have been going back and taking away some jungle creeps. 88 to 88 CS, so Alex is doing a pretty decent job staying on par with a blue buff Anivia in this far more in the mid lane. Meanwhile, up top, do you see Diamond Proc taking some cover for Darian as he's going to wind up recalling. Only has a Doran's Blade and Boots to his name, so going to potentially see him picking up some purchase. 1.2k gold to his name, so he's going to be going back and getting some items. Stanley, in the meantime, has gotten double Doran Shield to 
survive the trades against Jax. So now that Jax going back, getting a little bit of extra damage, could see things starting to even out in that top lane. It, it's actually been a great matchup from Jaren, but he has uh, had a lot of bags from Diamond Procs to so make it sure Stanley doesn't just dominate the matchup. And it can be a, uh, an Elise dominated matchup. Low ball spot by a ward in the bot lane. They really want to shut down Genja. I, I think the focus is going to be that Genja will be so far behind. Bebe, even though he's going to be dove on by Jax, uh, dove on by Alex Each, should be able to go ahead kite for long enough where he can deal the damage he needs to us. Low balls. Gonna go ahead and rotate into the lane right onto a ward though. This gank most likely will not be successful. No, so they are playing extremely passive. They know that Little Balls is there. Genja does have to be careful though. If he steps up to try to get one of those CS, there could be a bandage toss coming, a make it rain, or those entangling roots coming out from mistake. So that could be a very, very sketchy thing for Genja to do. So he's gonna have to try to sit back. CS using his ultimate pokes the bush towards Little Balls to see if he's still there. Realizes he is, and now Little Balls knows for sure that he's been spotted. So he is gonna decide to go back. Well, Genja keeping him in bottom lane though, wasting yeah. his time. They, they want to just waste his time. They could try and uh, just scare him away, so that way he doesn't uh, pressure them and uh, deny their CS. As Toy is getting that big blue Wraith Darien, trying to get some CS, trying to just get some extra farm. You know, doesn't want to be too far in his lane because of the possibility of an immovable gank, even though this time it was bought. So trying to actually counter him away, had, had the chance. We got Diamond Prox popping his ultimate. He's going to walk by that ward. Actually steps <laughs> on the seed as well, just letting his presence known. Throws the cleaver over the wall at mistake, and he is just going to wind up backing off. It does relieve a little bit of pressure on Genja, though. So he is going to be able to get himself reestablished in this lane and start the CSing all over I, I again. Say I do enjoy the aggressive seedling stomping. <laughs> just like, hey, hey, you know, I'm going to use the ult just to get to that faster. Unfortunately, there is a lot of ward coverage. No oracles quite yet on Diamond Products. And, well, this is only a 600 gold difference in the game. This is incredibly equal on both sides. I mean, the two kills do go to Bebe, but not a lot has happened recently. That's going to be important. Oh, Ooh, we got a fight. crescendo going off in the bottom lane, it looks like, as Sona and Corky going to have to back away. So we had a Mumu coming in through the lane. They thought they wanted to be aggressive in there, but they don't want to trade when they saw the sad mummy coming to play. BB, though, he's not done yet. There's the make it rain. Stacking those impure shots. There's the ultimate from Zyra. Going to knock up Gozu Pepper. Genja taking a lot of damage. Ignite is still ticking away on him. BB, though, extremely low. Aggressive flash from Gozu Pepper. The Creed's blocking him off. Can't get that last auto attack. And it looks like BB's oh, going to be okay. Okay, there's the bullet time trying to turn around on the Genja. Genja extreme with a Gosu Pepper trying to heal him back up. Mistake is taking a lot of damage as well. Nothing is going to come out of that awesome trade in bottom lane. So close. <laughs> The Zyra ultimate really just keeping Bebe alive. Unfortunately, despite the fact that Sona's ultimate was down, Ghost Pepper does a lot of damage. You know, you don't think about Sona's DPS, but it is incredibly high. Actually, top lane, Muna going for a gank onto Stanley. Looks like he had to use a repel. Winds up going down onto Diamond Prox, gets him a little bit closer to his tower, so Stanley able to utilize the gank to his, to his own benefit and actually gets out of it because of that. It's actually really funny how repel works in that way. It makes it so ganking from uh, an awkward angle, usually from behind, is incredibly, incredibly risky because if she gets a repel off, she just well, she gets away. <laughs> and that's just as Strength Release has. You can't really gank her from the back or you give her the escape route. And that's why everybody hates spiders. That's why. Well, Jax can do it too. That's why everybody, everybody hates Jax, so, you know, makes sense. All right, so uh, bo bottom lane looks like we are just kind of having the two AD carries come back to lane. We have Gozu Pepper on Sony here going back, picking up some extra wards. No GP10 items completed yet. He has gone for that Ruby Crystal concerning how aggressive the bottom lane has been. Also indicative by the fact that TPA's mistake has gotten hard of gold as his first GP10 item. So both of them are looking for that aggression in bottom lane, trying to even things out. Looks like there is going to be a little bit of a, was that a flash being used by Zyra? Tried to flash after Diamond Prox's uh, Mundo. He is going to pop the ultimate and try to run away. And TPA looking just here this very this very first dragon of the game there is a reason they are spotted by a ward that they cannot reveal because it's in the brush gonna have to go ahead and disengage not much mana on the toys and i'm gonna take a quick look at elise's build right now this is all about just surviving Jax, possibly pressuring Jax. is what, what is darian doing darian decides that this is his tower he's going to be going behind winds up having to burn the flash and the leave strike but elise gonna fly us right after their grandmaster's bite has been popped ignite taken away on the side of, D of uh, stanley trying to get the damage down onto darian he is gonna fall Kind of a silly move there. I think he overestimated how much damage he could really deal and how much he could really survive. When you dive past a tower like that, you're making the assumption that you're going to be able to go ahead and clear the creep waves and then fight both the creeps and the person you're diving against. But that, that didn't happen. That was just Stanley being able to outright beat Darian. Darian just not really noticing it at first. 
Ping is going down in the river as that ward in the brush does spot. Little Ball is coming around. Alex, he's doing a good job of jumping and driving out of there. He is going to wind up popping the Q, trying to see if he can hook onto a move, move. It does miss. Coming back, looks like Diamond Prox wound up taking that big raid, and Alex each took a couple of the other ones. Oracle's Elixir now been acquired by Diamond Prox. They can go start the ward hunting, take a quick look at Little Ball. I don't think he's acquired his own Oracle's Elixir yet, but if you take a look at his gold count. He has gotten double Philosopher, he's double GP10, the Philosopher's Stone, and Heart of Gold. Almost 400 gold in his inventory. We're going to have to see if now that they know the M5 has the Oracle's Elixir, if they're going to be doing the same thing to try to clear out the wards. There's no real big advantage for either side at the moment. It's a 500 gold lead. There are three kills in favor of TP, but the farm coming out from Moscow 5 has really kept them relevant. Uh, Dragon now being looked at by Moscow 5, but there are five members of TP on the bottom side of the map that's ready to fight. There we are. Jax is still in that top lane. No teleport or anything to his name, so this could be potentially dangerous. However, that ward coverage being cleared up by Taipei Assassins makes the reaction time a little, so they do get the flash from Alex each, dodging that bandage toss so they don't want to engage in here from Taipei Assassins. So M5 keeping a hold of that gold lead now. Like you said, only a couple hundred gold, but still, when you have first blood on the side of Taipei Assassins and all three kills in the game are on their side and you're heading gold, you're still looking pretty. Your CS is looking fine. A lot of that's going to be on Mundo, actually. Look at 68 CS to 50 on a move. They might have also got some earlier GP tents. And top turret goes down. A great situation for Moscow 5. Now they have a bigger lead than well TPA did. Just from that early uh, that tower push. And that dragon, since it was uncontested, since TPA got nothing from trying to defend it with all five, they lost an objective. And lost a lot of map control with that. So we do have this bottom lane continuing to trade back and forth. Taipei Assassins continuing to put the pressure on, although the lane from the side of M5 is starting to push more towards the tower. Gorky has acquired that phage, which he wants to be aggressive. He wants to engage in these trades, but because Misfortune has those impure shots to stack up the healing debuff and stack that magic damage, it won't be as effective in these trades when it comes to the extra Sony heal. So it's kind of just like there's a little bit of sustain on the side of M5, but considering Taipei Assassins doesn't have any on that non-sustained support Zyra, it's kind of going to work out almost evenly for that, but that phage from Corky, if he gets the proc on Misfortune, he's going to turn it around because that means he has something similar to her make it rain. So the lane has reached a point where Corky, he's not super squishy, and uh, Misfortune's damage, damage is going to be able to wipe him out in about two or three seconds. It's a very, very even matchup where it's going to be not so much who gets a quick auto attack off and just follows through with it. It's going to be more about who gets a good CC off, which is going to be up to uh, Mistake or Ghost Pepper and possibly make it rain from coming out of Bebe. But it's it's really, really dangerous dangerous for either side to go aggressive just because if one person gets hit by a CC or more importantly if both the support and AD carry get hit by it, either Crescendo or the uh, ultimate from Zyra, that's going to be a one fight. So both sides have been playing very cautiously lately. That's kind of the story across the game. No one wants to go too aggressive. These teams, when they reach the higher levels of play, they do get a lot more cautious. We actually are seeing, we took a look at the gold counts there, less than 100 gold difference between BB and Genja. So despite First Blood and getting two kills on Corky, because of the objectives that Moscow 5 took in Dragon in that top tower, a slight CS advantage in favor of Genja, he's staying on par with the farmer Misfortune. So as we mentioned, even though Misfortune has a BF sword to her name, Corky has gone back completely to Sheen, has the Phage, he has a little extra burst damage in his spell, so if they get in these trades, they could start to go in favor of M5, but TPA, I think they've realized that this lane isn't as in favor as they want it to be four members of their team now grouping towards bottom lane against the three that M5 has. I like that he's just still mid, just gonna go ahead and CS it up at 210 CS at the 18 minute mark. That's actually insane. Not that that he's only not only that, gold. he's ahead of Anivia. Yeah, he's ahead of Anivia with 194. He's been using Crescent Slash just to, to farm up non stop and just make sure he has that gold lead. But at the same time, uh, that Roman coming out of toys, he's missing a lot of CS as a result. And that might be what Alex Huge wants to do just to, to dominate the lanes would he roams himself. Well, Mundo once again walking over those seeds, just letting his presence known. Oracle's Elixir has been acquired, so he's just here to clear out wards, not necessarily to gank. Mid lane, though, Alex Each gets the Moonfall down on the Little Balls. Flash Frost comes out from Toys. There's the Glacial Storm. Good wall knocks Alex Each back into it, but I don't know if they're going to be able to capitalize on this. He's level 15, and Anivia is only level 13. Alex Each with the Abyssal Scepter lives through all of that. Just a poorly, poorly uh, timed gank, really. Uh, looking at Alex Each's build, he now has a Merc Treads. He now has the Abyssal Scepter. He has magic resist, so that game really did not come to uh -oh, Diamond a lot damn, Prox, though. he's manning up, going underneath the tower. Flash Frost misses everybody. Diamond Prox just tanking the tower. Now the M5's grouping up towards this mid lane. They could look to pressure that tower, or are they just going to go back, get the blue buff for Alex Each? Looks to be the idea. They're going to disperse. Mundo going back into his own jungle, going to farm up some of those minions and look to clear out a couple more wards in this jungle. And the scary thing is, Jack. Jax with Darian here, now that that top lane is down, yeah, Stanley's been able to sit back and farm for a little bit, but he went triple Doran shield to win out in trades against Jax, and he lost the lane. 
It, this is actually what Mexico 5 is looking for. They're just looking for the late game at this point. Like, they're behind three kills. They're a little bit ahead in gold. They're, they're fine with that just because Misfortune doesn't have an escape. Jax is incredibly powerful versus Misfortune just because once you jump on her, all she can really do is double up and make it rain. And that Chaos Strike stun is going to be just incredibly imperative. It will shut down Misfortune if it does land. And Alex Teach, Ana, Diana, their, their plan is to kill Bebe. And with that, with uh, Genja farming well, with just the CS lead across the lanes, except for top lane, they know that they're going to be in an advantageous position if they just stall this out. Bot turret is going down from the pressure. At this point, Misfortune can't really fight. And this is kind of a, a problem she has because they cannot really lock down Corky and Sona for long enough because the burst is going to be a bit too high from them. Uh, they can't go for a long sustained fight, which is what Misfortune wants. And it's it's a dangerous position for TPA to be bullied around like this because their team doesn't necessarily scale well besides possibly a Nibia support Zyra. Looks like they are trying to get down onto Alex Each again. Stanley coming in now with toys, still trying to deal damage. Moonfall goes off from Alex Each, pulling him back into the tower just a little bit. Frostbite's critical strike damage. If that's Frostbite's critical strike there that just hit Alex Each, he shrugged it off like it was absolutely nothing. He's a little bit below half health. 43 MR. And they, he burned through a bunch of spells from the side of TPA. They are going to force him back, though. But Darian on Jax, like I said, his top lane is down. He can be wherever the heck he wants to be right now. Between him and Diamond Proc, Genja actually coming up with Gosu Pepper as well. They're just going to defend against this TPA push. And like you said, Moscow Fi's plan, they want to dive down on the BB. They have to be careful though. Darian's taking a lot of damage here. But if they just stall out Taipei Assassins, they are just going to become exponentially ahead of them, considering they're already ahead of their early game. And that's what TPA looked like they wanted to win with this. Comp. Is that, I don't know if you saw that when a moon initiated, Jax had the counter strike up. By the time he hit, he couldn't use the curse of the sad mummy because the counter strike landed and he just got stunned the second he got there. So a funny little play coming out of uh, Jax and, and a Mumu, but really, it's it's the tankiness of Alex Each. Who does the 80 damage right now? It's going to be entirely Bebe. A little bit comes out of Sand Lee, but he's both going to be magic damage because of how Elise scales. So really, it's going to be, if, if they shut down Bebe, they build magic resist, and it's going to be very hard for TPA to keep fighting that. I thought Ghostu Pepper wanted to engage her. It looks like Diamond Fox pops the ultimate. He wants to go in Alex each, as well as Ghostu Pepper. Darian get going in as well. Mistake going to have to flash over that wall. Repel has gone off from Elise. Pops right back down in place, and then the funny things that Elise can do here. But the grasping roots from Zyra there wound up catching Gosu Pepper, and it caught Genja. So the initiation from that crescendo was not there. M5 not able to take a fight to TPA. TPA knows that they get into a bad engagement. They are going to get eliminated completely by the team come from M5. But they are continuing to press them back. They took the second dragon of the game. They have two towers down compared to the zero that Taipei Assassins has been able to pressure out of them. And if they continue to push down this mid lane, they're going to gain that complete forward map advantage. They'll have all three of the outer towers down, and TPA is going to have to be put in a defensive posture where their team, with an aggressive misfortune, with the ability to wall off and glacial storm people from toys, they want to be aggressive in this. Even though they can stall out with Anivia, they, they're comfortable this time around was to use that to aggressively push towers in zone Moscow 5 out from defending them. And th that is going to be the big problem if they do want to be aggressive. Toys is just going to stall this game out as long as possible. Luckily, Jax with the way he's farming, now at 155 CS, looking over at Stanley. He still just has Haunting Guy's Torque Shoes and the Triple Door and Shield with the Philistone to back that up. He's got a lot of regeneration. He might be able to survive against him in lane. But they just want to keep waiting because eventually, eventually Jax will be able to beat Elise. It's not really early, it's going to take a long time for that 1v1 to really be a good situation, but when that happens, all of a sudden, the fact that Toys can wipe out creep waves isn't going to matter because at uh, top lane, Darian can just go ahead and bully him out, possibly go for a kill and pressure those turrets. At Moscow 5, with this 4,000 gold lead at the 23 minute mark, it's not a game ender. It's something you can definitely recover from, but TPA, they just have not had map control, they just have not had the control of the game that they really need and that they really want. Like you were talking about, Alex Each by maxing out that magic resistance, he's not taking a lot of damage from the two primary sources of Elise and Anivia. Even though Elise has a decent amount of spell penetration on her with those sorcerer shoes and that haunting guys, when you think about it, there's an Abyssal Scepter and a needlessly large rod on Alex Each. There's a Trinity Force and Mercury Charge that have been completed on the side of Jax. When you say the words Trinity Force, Abyssal Scepter, and needlessly large rod, they usually outclass items like haunting guys and Philosopher's Stone. Well, alright. <laughs> I'll say that Elise has a very special way of doing damage. It is built, built off this penetration. I think that Stanley must have a decent amount of gold in his inventory. Just to take a quick look at it. Oh, see how much gold does he have? Bomb yeah, 1300. So I think he's waiting to just outright buy an item because, well, he doesn't want to waste the gold from the door and shield. But he did focus too much on lane in terms of the item build. And now the fact that laning is kind of ended, that Darian is roaming around rather than just focusing on CSing and looking over at uh, Moscow 5's team, 
Corky does a lot of magic damage. Mundo himself does percentage of magic damage. There's not necessarily that much pure physical on Moscow 5. So the build coming out of Elise doesn't do that much. No, I think what we were talking about, Taipei Assassin expected to win their lanes or at least win some engagements early, and they just haven't been able to do that. BB actually might be in a tight spot here, but Darian's just going to walk right past. It looks like Moscow 5, they just want to push this lane, they want to take down this tower, get that forward map presence, and eliminate the strategy that Taipei Assassins wanted to use. They still have Anibi on their side, and we talked about how she gets saw out at towers. Might not have been their number one plan to do with, but they still can wait until Elise gets those better items for their team composition. They can wait until Toys become well, toys. He gets the Athena's Unholy Grail. He can start getting his own AP build, maybe going for a death cap or something along the lines of that. But still, misfortune with that Bloodthirster. If she gets an Infinity Edge, if she gets the Phantom Dancer, she's still an AD carry. She's still going to hurt. She doesn't necessarily need the Phantom Dancer as early on either because she has that attack speed steroid in her impure shots. So Ooh, close Taipei, bandage toss there. Yeah, Taipei Assassins, they have the tools to beat M5, but M5 is just outplaying them in the early stages here. Yeah, they're, 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 they're waiting. They're applying pressure, which makes TPA be on the defensive. Look at this. this is a two-man Baron, and they can do this. this I mean, TPA, they, they did do this yesterday, I believe. They have to uh, be suspect to it. There goes a the seedling. This should interrupt just because the threat of Baron uh, being, t or the threat of an engagement on Baron with two people is uh, very, very high. Actually, TPA can try to make a power play. They know that two members of uh, Moscow 5 are low. Mundo has used the ultimate. They're just going to go ahead and apply their own pressure now. This is a good play. They see their chance. They make their move. Moscow 5 did try to make something happen, and when, when they got punished for it, well, here's the result. Well, that's what happens when you try to force those early and low number men barons. Ooh, that bandage shot's almost hit. This looks like a flash going on. Again, Ghosty Pepper has to get out of there. Mistake taking a lot of poke damage back over the wall, though. Alex, he's setting his sights on Zyra, misses the Moonfall because of a good flash from Mistake. Now the Mundo Cleavers have gone out. He and Darian have both arrived back to this fight. TPA, they might have to back off this. And Mistake's taking a lot of poke damage. Jax leaps in, puts the counter strike up. We saw Amuma's bandage toss barely missing. Like you said last time, if Amuma went in with the bandage toss, there would have been no curse in the side moment to follow up because of that counter strike. Genja taking a bit of poke from Toys there, does dodge the flash for us. So both these teams, they're going back and forth. They both both want to engage, but they want to engage on their own terms. They don't want to get into a fight that one or the other two people have started. Uh, a lot of these fights are going to come down to little balls, just going ahead, getting a good curse to the head bummy on his multiple people's public. Actually, this could be huge. Genja is going to get rooted still. Winds up Valkyrieing out, though, back to his own tower range. Now the curse to the side mummy is down. It's all upon Ben 5, M5 Ben Q. They can do whatever the heck they want to TPA. TPA knows this. They're going to wind up backing off to get into a defensive posture. M5 is going to take this a little bit of time to go back, heal themselves up, taking a quick look at the gold counts. They do have some gold to spend. Diana actually with almost a thousand gold. Mundo in his own right, going out buying, has a Kindle Jam and an Aegis of the Legion, so now they have that team fight presence with the Aegis, they could potentially be looking to do some pushing here in the mid lane. Really, I, I, th I think they just want to farm. I, I do love that Chris is sad mummy, but that just shows how tanky Alex each is. Now with the, uh, the Rebdon's death cap, that's a lot of uh, the extra defense actually for someone like Diana because he does get extra HP or extra shield from his W for more AP. So it may not look like a tanky build because it's uh, Death Cap, which provides no defense on most characters, but that's just going to make him tanky, make him really scary for uh, or TPA to initiate on, and this just, it makes him an initiator. And this is really what's what's scary for TPA. Alex Siege, he's getting scary. He's going to be able to just go ahead and initiate, not die for quite a while. And Diana, with one good pull, can do so much damage. Not to mention the fact that if Alex Siege becomes the initiator, Ghosty Pepper gets to use that crescendo once the team has been grouped up by that Moonfall. Diana rushes in, pulls them in with Moonfall. Ghosty Pepper lands the crescendo across everybody that's been pulled in. TPA can do absolutely nothing to respond. Even if they get a curse of the sad mummy off all that's going on, well, everybody is stuck in the same exact place at the same time. They just kind of cancel out each other. So It'll be one of those weird situations where no one does anything. <laughs> Lobot's got a nice little bit of pressure there. Darian just, you know, walks right down very casually past that wall. And uh, Toys can still keep pulling mistakes, though, taking a lot of damage. Looks like Darian's trying to go down, has to burn the exhaust on him. He still has the Leap Strike potentially coming off cooldown. Mistake's actually going to want to turn around, gets the Grass and Roots down. Grandmaster might as well go off Flash after. BB, there's the Crescendo coming out to defensively to save him. So now M5 has that one initiation method cut off. Alex is just dashing over to Toys to try to get out of there. At least following from that, Zyro Roots have come out now. So Stranglethorn has been burned from the side of Taipei Assassins. And both these teams, they keep getting these fights where they want to go in, but they keep missing key. key initiation methods and the other one backs off and they're just going back and forth jockeying for the prime position in these fights and neither of them are really getting it right now and as you mentioned m5 they might not want to get that hard engaged they may be content just sitting back and farming 
345 CS before the 30 minute mark on Alex Ichi's Diana. We have Genja, of course, 223 CS, even though he's behind Misfortune. Those global objectives are keeping him at par with her gold count. Still about only about 100 gold separating those two. You is, mentioned is that it. a record, by the way? The 348 on a. Uh... Alex each before the 30 minute mark. It might be. That might, that might be some of the highest we've ever seen in tournament play, I believe. We got to go back to like 23 minutes and see what his gold count was because I think Froggen had 300 at 23 minutes. Maybe, was maybe it? he's a little bit behind. This is still one of the highest CS games in the in, in ever, really, in when, any sort of tournament. When you think and of M5, you, th you think aggression. You don't think sitting back and farming like that. And I, I like that. I like that they could do. Oh, Ganja, you got hit by that. Cost. Did you want to though? I think it's yes actually. Darien goes in. There are four members of Taipei Assassin chasing him. Curse of the Cyber goes off on only him, but there's no Sonic Crescendo available, so Darien is going to fall to Taipei Assassins. Fortunately, they thought they could go ahead and counter initiate, but that was a 4v3 in the end. This member couldn't really do that much with the, uh, the ultimate, and Lowball this time did have the ultimate for a fight, unlike the last little skirmish they had. Yeah, and we did see Ghost of Pepper burning the Crescendo defensively to save Darien in the previous time, so Sona unfortunately can't save Jax twice from that one. And if they had the Crescendo, things might have actually turned around. It would have given Alex East just a little bit more time to try to reach in and get engaged in that fight. But Taipei Assassins, they take that small advantage, and now they're ahead four kills to zero, but they're still on the back foot compared to M5 because of those three dragons, because of the towers they have down. And even though they've taken those kill leads and they've taken out a member of M5, they're still being so hesitant to try to push these lanes and M5 they're content with this Gendra split pushing the bottom lane forcing BB to come here and defend which means the Taipei Assassins they're not going to group up and push this mid lane because they just don't think they can looking over at Gendra he's actually building what looks like a catalyst I would assume this could be a Banshee to be able to stop the Mumu initiation and TPA their poke it's decent but maybe not quite so reliable lots of skill shots coming out but nothing super long range except maybe the uh, Zyra roots so I mean I, I like I like that pick actually quite a bit it's gonna go ahead and save him but he can't get hit by the bindings which has happened multiple times it's very true and that is one of the uh, kind of go in methods that Taipei Assassin has there's the uh the Bandage Toss coming in, Sun coming out, Ghost of Pepper does get the Crescendo under tower range, but he is going to fall, rest of M5 not grouped up here, Taipei Assassins are going to be able to take their first tower of the game, fight still ensuing, but the stuns from both Elise and Anivia have wound up missing, Darian on the opposite side of the wall here over by Blue Buff, potentially going to try to come around and flank, but Taipei Assassins content with their kill on their tower, looks like they're just going to back off with their victory for the day. A great little catch there, you know, taking out Ghost of Pepper, taking out Crescendo, Genji takes a decent amount of poke, but they have to make sure that they have their ultimates up for big engagements, and going for the small catches when they don't have Curse of the Sad Mummy up is going to be a big deal. However, when that comes back up, it looks like TPA, even though they may not have the gold advantage, they have a little bit more teamfight presence just because of their AoE presence. And Moscow 5, they're trying to delay, trying to wait for the late game, which is coming very quickly based off CS numbers. But because they're so spread out and they're so focused on farming, there are chances for someone to get punished like Darian did before in the catch and Ghost of Pepper recently. Team Mercury treads on the side of M5 Ben Q. We see that Sona has yet to pick hers up, but she has the no magic mantle as well as those boots is, those boots, so she's potentially going for that. There's that double AP composition coming out from Taipei Assassin, so they know about this. Interestingly enough, we see Elise getting those double magic penetration items and then going for Shirelia's reverie. So she's adding some utility to her team, knowing that they need to have the engage and disengage capabilities in order to take advantage of positioning in these fights. It, it's going to be about mobility. It's going to be about chasing. I mean, look at the, the magic resist. This is all saying that they're just going to focus on Beba and try and just tank through Anivia, tank through a, a lease, and even uh, a Mumu does his own uh, magic damage. So they just want to tank everything and kill up Beba and just win a, a slower fight afterwards because their DPS will be lower, but they, just, they have the resistances to survive that. So in the end, uh, that reverie is going to be a huge payoff dividends if it could be used to protect Bebe or get a, get a good initiation so they can start the fight on their own terms. It's all about who gets a catch, and this is a good catch right there. Darian actually getting a caught out again. Flash Frost as well. Curse of the side. Mummy being used. Ghost of Pepper here trying to save him. There's the Crescendo getting him out of the Zyra Roots. But now the Flash Frost under Ghost of Pepper. Critical strike from that Frost, but BB's going to want to pick it up and kill Lens. His third in a row, but here comes Alex Each. Takes that little ball. Bullet time going out. Zonya's Hourglass has been acquired. The bullet time will actually take down Darian. So Jack goes down. Diamond Prox takes taking through. Alex is now coming in. Gendra Valkyrie's in from the side. BB goes down. Mistake taken extremely low. There's the flash forward. Mundo Cleaver's going to be one to finish that one off, but Alex Eats in the meantime taking those double AP champions. All the magic resists in the world can't save him. Looks like Elise is going to want to pick up a kill, but now Gendra and Diamond Fox. There's the Cleaver. Flash over the wall from Stanley after the Valkyrie's been used by Gendra, so he looks like he might get out of there, but Diamond Fox continue to chase down on toys. Those quirky missiles are poking away, and all in all, it is going to be a 3-for-3 three three trade between these teams. Still dead even. Well, 
You know what, Moscow 5, they now have kills, they can pressure down this mid turret, the mid turret they've been trying to get for such a long time. Toys doesn't have the mana nor the HP to, to uh, defend this, as Stanley, kind of the same deal. Actually very risky that he's here now, but could try and put up a decent defense with his W, that running little spider can blow up and clear that creep wave, but Gendry's gonna go ahead and pull it away. Today still though, the turret will survive. We still have the turret there. Those little spiderlings are going to be taking it through. Stanley's going to heal himself up just a little bit off of those. We have Mundo actually taking some damage <laughs> on the dragon. M5 securing their fourth dragon of the game here. So they're continuing to keep up this gold lead, continuing to go toe to toe with Taipei Assassins. Even though it's an 8 to 3 uh, kill advantage and it's 4 1 and 3 misfortune compared to 1, 2, and 1 Corky. Look at those gold counts. Corky's actually ahead by about 20 gold because of all the global objectives that Moscow 5 has been taking. All right. Why did that for, or that fight work out so evenly? Uh, because so much was used to catch up uh, Darian at the beginning of the fight. He used his ult, the Grandmaster's might tanked up, and it was just cooldowns being used on him. And there were a lot of cooldowns used to, uh, to shut him down. First, the sad mommy, I believe uh, Mistake might have used his own ultimate during the fight, and even uh, the bull time come out again, so I don't believe it did, but still a lot came out. So when the fight uh, in coming back around with Mos Moscow 5, initiating the 4v5, they just didn't have the, summon the summoners up, they didn't have the ultimates up. They really had to just kind of kite that fight out. And look at this, Darian has been able to 1v1 Stanley. Now, Rappel goes up, but he's not going to be able to go anywhere with that one. Surprisingly, not going back to engage on this one. There's a Guardian Angel not picked up. M5, though, they're in a fight over here in the Baron Pit. Little Ball's actually going, taking a lot of that damage. At least each, and Diamond Prox as well, taking a bit of the brunt. Diamond Prox taking more so than anyone else. Pops his ultimate, though. He's going to be able to regenerate up a little bit. There's a Rappel going off from Elise, but she's going to come back down, change out of spider form, walk away. Darian's Jax, though, he's starting to get scary. He's building items for his own potential Guardian and you know, has had that Trinity Force for a while now. And pretty soon we might see one of the most famous M5. Everybody gets that Guardian Angel. Let's fight 16 times. It would make some sense. They they just they need more magic resistance, I think, is their big plan. Just keep surviving against everybody except Bebe. And Bebe, he is 4 with 3. He's very scary. Actually, mistake being taken very low. Burst yeah. it down very quickly. Alex each winds up taking him out of the fight there. There's plants firing away as well as the Zyra passive. Alex just gets down to about half HP, but Gendra comes in very quickly, takes his place, trying to keep up the pressure on this turret. They want to take it down, but Toys of that Inevia is so good at clearing creep waves. Nice strike coming out from uh, uh, Stanley there, trying to get the uh, Banshee's Veil down with the Spider before he gets stunned off. Fortunately, he does dodge the stun. Low Ball's looking for initiation, though. It is a 4v5. Toys is retreating. They can't really fight this turret. will most likely go down at this point. They do not have the wave clear. Yeah, Gen just needs to poke at this one tree twice. Darian actually get the final whack on that one. A little upset. I didn't hear the Jax animation where he just goes, oh, chook, when he hits the tower. But Boom. regardless of that fact, we do have M5 pressure in this. There is no Diamond Prox. Now, Little Balls goes in with the initiation for the bandage toss, but takes a bunch of damage to, re uh, to reciprocate it. We do have Genji getting on the half HP because he got wound up getting stunned from the binding from Elise. Does that the Valkyrie away, and M5 looks like they're going to wait for Diamond Prox, try to group up on this one. Genja is extremely low compared to BB, though, who's at full health. Stanley took a little bit of poke damage, but M5, they got to be careful. Banshee's Hill has come back up for Genja, though. This, this is not a bad time for Moscow 5 to fight. Uh, Genja is a bit low. That's going to be the big threat, but if he does get some auto attacks, does get some uh, life steal back up, and once Ghost Pepper has returned, as Genja gets caught on the other side of the wall. His movement is interrupted, but he does escape. But like, look at the item build as that ward does go down. Uh, Darian has finished his Guardian Angel. He now has actually a blue elixir in his inventory to go ahead and increase his cooldown reduction, try to get more leap strikes, I would assume. And more counter strikes. He's, he's yeah. tanky. Counter strike has like a, a billion second cooldown, so it's weird. Well, it's going to be half a billion. Now. Half a billion. Or it's like 10% <laughs> less than a billion. 10% less than a billion. 90% billion. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I'm, I'm so bad at math. If he does, if he does survive, that counter strike could be huge, but he wants to be able to chase down. It's going to be a situation where he might have to uh, get uh, go through some kite, go through some uh, slow from Anivia to get to uh, Bebe. But this is not a bad time for Moscow 5 to fight. They have the gold lead. They have a team that as long as Genja does not get hit by everything. Like that. They should be able to win. <laughs> no, the everything would be the curse of the sad mummy, which uh, Lil Ball's looking for right now. We do actually have Darian engaging on the toys. He wants to jump in to take out that uh, take out the Cryo Phoenix. Stanley takes a brunt of the damage. Lil Ball's coming in the fight. Wants to pop curse of the sad mummy as many targets as he possibly can. Wants up gaining two members. Alex each and Diamond Proc. Bullet time trying to go across the curse of the sad mummy. And by dissing Andre. Right? Alex each going to want to take it out. Mistake. Now they're jumping down onto Stanley. He's the target of their attacks. Darian getting extremely low. Guardian Angel has been popped. Alex each Diamond Proc. And Goju Pepper 
are all extremely low. Get into coming around this side, get taken down to barely any HP. One bar left on Corky as he's going to wind up getting away, and they wind up trading two for zero in favor of Moscow 5. TPA, though, there's still a little bit of mana on toys. They think they can still fight this. They're so low on the side of Moscow 5, actually chasing out Corky and uh, Mundo. They're just going to keep applying some pressure while they have the chance. That was a great fight coming out from Moscow 5. They split up the Amumu. He could not hit everybody at the beginning of the fight. So, so much damage, so much pressure really went down before he could do anything. Bottom turret had died to creeps throughout this entire push. Not, no, nope. well, no one's really been down there for a good amount of time. The CS though, 447 on Alex each before the 40 minute mark. Alatich has been running around his own mid lane, claiming his crease. He's been claiming the entire jungle of Diamond Prox, who now he's Dr. Mundo with a random wind zone and has a Spirit Massage as well as an Aegis Allegi picked up very early on in the game. Doesn't really need as many items because he's just going to activate that ultimate, run in there, work as the tank. If he pops that, uh, if he's able to pop that random wind zone on members of, M of TPA, it's going to be great, especially if he gets it on Misfortune. She does have her own Phantom Dancer, though, in addition to picking up a Bloodthirster. Last Whisper and Quicksilver Sash has been acquired. So she's actually going to try to get out of a lot of the crowd control that M5 is going to be putting down. If she gets counter strike she's going to be able to clear that stun away. If she's going to be targeted down by a lot of the slow that uh, or the crescendo coming out from M5, she's going to be able to Quicksilver Sash that and run away. You mentioned she doesn't have very many escapes, so she needs the she ability needs to, to cleanse yeah. that away in order to run away. Unfortunately, it will not work on the Moonfall coming out from Diana. That pull will still uh, hit. The slow can be removed, of course, but the actual pulling, the knockup cannot. It's a nice little feature knockups have. So it's gonna be, it's still gonna be rough. If Alex each ever initiates on the Bebe before Bebe either buys a Guardian Angel, which uh, that chain looks like it will be building into, or there is really, really good protection for him, uh, that will be the end of Bebe, possibly a lost fight for TPA. Alex Teach, though, I mean, he's almost with a complete item build. Diana, when she does get farmed out, her DPS becomes insane. She's almost unkillable with the shield she generates, and it's it's getting very scary for TPA because Toys, he's scary, but is he as scary as Alex Teach right now? Not quite. And realize that, I mean, in the last 20 minutes, TPA has gotten 5 kills, Moscow 5 has gotten 6 kills, they've gotten every single dragon. They've really kind of evened out this match. TPA looking to go up towards the Baron Pit. They want to try to bait out a fight or at least make sure Moscow 5 is not going for it. M5, 6k gold advantage. We're talking about Guardian Angels. Let's take a look at a rundown around here. One thing that did happen in that fight for Taipei Assassins, they burned the Guardian Angel of Darien. TPA, they still have the Guardian Angel up on Stanley. They're going to be acquiring one on Misfortune, who's building extremely defensive, as is Genja. Mercury treads on top of that Banshee's Veil. He could potentially be going for his own Guardian Angel in a little bit, but he might want to get one or one or those two more damaging items. Now that he has the Banshee's Veil, Guardian Angel might not be number one priority on his side, but they do have a Guardian Angel being acquired by Alex each as is indicative of that chain vest he has in inventory. They might not want to try fighting TPA until Darien's Guardian Angel has respawned, but they do have to try to contest them at this Baron. They're actually starting it, and potentially they could go for a fight with that Sona Crescendo up. <laughs> Genja, the other side, you know, it's not a great situation. This Baron is applying pressure, forcing TPA to fight, uh, but Moscow 5, they took a decent amount of damage, and they're not really going to be able to do anything. Both sides still very cautious, and of course, Bebe in the back line, staying far, far away. The AD carries, they're in a risky position, that's why they're building so defensively. We don't see this that often, but when you do see it, it means that they know how easy they are to focus, they know how quick it is for them just to get obliterated. So we do have M5 backing off that Baron. There was damage being dished out, but it doesn't really look like it's gone across anybody. We do have actually the Valkyrie forward from Genji. They want to try to catch on to Stanley here. Is Mundo Clear being blocked out by one of those spiders? Spider actually getting cut off by the wall. Little Balls tries to go in with the Bandage Sauce. There's the Crescendo as well as the Curse of the Side Mommy. Alex each on a rampage going to take out Little Balls. Stanley has to repel away. His Guardian Angel is still active. Bullet time goes off, but Alex each hits the Zanya's Hourglass. Stanley gets away with no HP. With Mistake and Toys taking a bunch of damage. Darian tries to go into BB. No guard. Guardian Angel active, BB's gonna wanna pick up a kill there. Alex each will turn around and finish off the tower. Kendra gets another good burst damage down on the toys, but he is gonna Valkyrie away. So they wind up trading one for one. M5 takes a turret, and I think they work out ahead in that fight. Unfortunately for Elise, her escape skills do not work if there's nothing for her to jump to, so she used the repel, could not really get out of that fight, and was in a, in a dire situation at that point. A nice little catch, they at least took out Darien. Uh, the Guardian Angel was not burned on Stanley, but they still lose an objective and still a little bit of map control going in favor of Moscow 5, and now they're pushing out the spot turret. And really, the problem is that if one person get, get, gets cut out on either side, that could be the game there. I mean, something like Stanley, where his role in the fight is going to be more of a being annoying and then executing people when they're low rather than just uh, winning the fight at the beginning, like with someone like Amumu or Nivea. It's still really important they have all five, that all five are incredibly strong, incredibly far. That Amumu, by the way, only 81 CS the 43 minute mark. Amubu doesn't need a lot of gold to do what he needs to do. 
but still, he is running a double GP10 and has not well, upgraded either, either the Philostone or Heart of Gold for quite some time. But he's behind. He is very squishy as a result, and he's dying early on in these fights. Uh, that crescendo from Gosu Pepper, it was used to try and prevent a Mumu from ulting before he would die. A 900 gold, 2,000 gold earn on the GP10s he has in his inventory. That is, that is a lot of gold that you made from nothing. And the thing is, too, he's going for his own Banshee Zell, so he wants to block some of the initiation efforts coming out from Taipei Assassins. He at least wants to block the, either the Crescendo or the Alex East Crescent in order so he can't actually jump onto him and not get that cooldown reset. So that if they do get that, if they do wind up blocking out one of those, then M5's initiation isn't going to be as strong, and he will be able to survive a little bit more. Of course, getting an extra health, a little bit of extra mana and magic resistance is never a bad thing. He is going to block out some of the damage coming out from, of course, the quirky spells, not necessarily his auto attacks. He will be blocking out a little bit of the damage from Jax, but mainly, Alex East has been cleaning house. 5, 1, and 2. 500 CS at 45 minutes into the game. Damn. I don't think I've seen a CS that high outside of Dota. He's done with <laughs> items, and uh, well, Diamond Prox now being chased out. <laughs> by TPA. Uh, he's not eligible just to go ahead and disengage, but yeah, he's got, that's a lot of CS. He is done with items, just needs to buy potions and oracles at this point, which uh, he has not quite done yet. 623 ability power, as well as a guardian angel, void staff now being acquired, mercury trade, so he doesn't have all the spell penetration in the world. He does have that abyssal staff, which will of course be having that magic reduction aura. That's why he has a void staff too, so well, he's, he's got what he needs. <laughs> like, he's got the spell bend. He deals a ridiculous amount of damage. Toys at the opposite end at 435 CS, 70 behind. But when you're comparing 500 to 430, it's really not that big of a difference. That's still a full item in the end because of the kills Alex each has, because of the objectives Moscow 5 has taken. And that's very noticeable. The Toys is doing quite a bit of damage. This is not a Warbox build. This is a build where he just hurts a lot. 635 ability power being picked up by TPA's toy, so he actually has more ability power and spell penetration than Alex each at this point. Well, potentially not. He has sorcery issues comp compared to the Abyssal Scepter, so they're pretty much on par with one another, but he still has an item slot in his inventory. If he gets a Guardian Angel as well, that's going to be three times in a row they're going to have to kill toys before he finally falls down in a fight. Guardian Angel now has been acquired by BB. Stanley's Guardian Angel has yet to be popped in this, in this game, on top of the fact that now Darian has his Guardian Angel up. Alex each we saw picking up his own guardian angel. Genja in the meantime, he hasn't really bought items for a decent amount of time. I keep hitting the C button instead of the X button to swap this over. He still has about 2k gold in the bank. Could potentially see him going back, maybe picking up a last wizard to get a little bit of spell penetration, uh, a little bit more armor penetration on his builds. So those auto attacks pack a little extra punch. Or he could be going straight for that infinity edge to just get the, the burst of extra damage. Potentially also could be getting the guardian angel of his own because it's M5. Who the heck doesn't want a guardian angel on M5? True, but th they do need that damage, they do need that physical presence. Uh, Sam's taking a little bit of poke against Genja. Genja not taking much himself because of that Banshee's Veil. Uh, th they have a lot of choices here. The question is going to be, do they want to fight or do they want to survive? What does Genja need to do? I think he might, he might just need a Guardian or not. Uh, Darian's going to wind up getting caught out here. does have the Leaf Strike away, but he's going to walk right into the Zyra. Did they burn this Guardian Angel? That's going to be devastating for M5. Guardian Angel is down. He's not being able to jump over the wall. Alex, he decides to rush in there with his ultimate. Does actually not use the Flash, but Toys is going to wind up getting away. Expends his own Flash to do so. Now it looks like Genja might be getting caught out here. He is going a little bit Rambo this game. Yeah, uh, Genja, well, Darian too as well. Darian 042 has been going very aggressive. To, uh, Genja, do you want to be there? I don't think so. You're going to have the Valkyrie away. Does wind up dodging the Flash Frost at the same exact time. M5 is starting to put some pressure on the Baron area. You wouldn't really think about this considering Darian's Guardian Angel has been pop, but we still have a full 5v5 potential. Little Balls, they know that they can nerf him, burst him down in basically one swing. That second tier bottom tower has gone down on the side of Taipei Assassins, so that's even more gold stacking on the lead for M5. Now approaching an 8,000 gold advantage in their favor. So it's all up to M5 now. Do they want to fight when do they want to push in towards TPA and can TPA stall them out long enough to win? Well, we're, we're at the late game. We've reached it. It's 48 minutes into this game. I, the weird thing is not that much has happened because both lanes or both teams have been just pushing lanes aggressively and counter pushing very defensively and when they see an opening well the other team usually covers up very quickly. Barrett now being attempted uh, this could be huge for Moscow 5 or TPA depends on who kills who really. We're going to see the ultimate coming in from Diamond Prox. Again, the pincer attack here on Taipei Assassins. As we did have Corky Genja going down, as well as Gosu Pepper to slay that dragon. They're going to try to catch him off. Little Balls goes in with the bandage toss. Oh, it looks like the Banshee Bell has a pop on his side. Realize that not everybody was there. Alex, he's wanted to go in with the Moonfall. Not his Hourglass through the curse of the side. Gosu Pepper's going to fall. Does get a crescendo off, but it doesn't really hit anybody on the side of TPA. 
Now Rappel goes off. Diamond Fox taking extremely low. Alex is going to go back in. Does want to take down a move, but he's dropping extremely low. Guardian Angel has been popped. BB wants it flashing after Genja. Is he going to go down? No, he's not, but you know who is? Poor Alex each in the middle of everybody, and that went phenomenally for TPA. And th the question I have for Moscow 5 is who are they trying to focus down? Who are they trying to initiate upon? They had Corky going forward, getting hit, and it's kind of caught up by Amumu, and TPA, they have their AoE CC, they have their AoE initiation, they really kind of laid it down onto everybody. Once they saw their single target, so who got focused down? Goes to Pepper because he was just susceptible to it, could not really crescendo before he got bursted down by the AoE. And Alex Itch, when he was left alone there, but they're chasing out the scary AD. They're chasing down Darren, who doesn't have the Garden Angel or defense. Uh, T Faders can go ahead and rotate towards this Baron, but they're still behind a relatively high amount of gold. It's a noticeable amount, it's about 5,000. But really, the team fight coming out, their focus is making up for that gold difference. It's they are showing their prowess in team fights. They are showing their organization, which Moscow Five, they have in spades. But I, it, it, the team fights have just not been there for them. That little, that little bit of Rambo syndrome seems to be kicking M5 in the rear. Yeah, Darian getting time. caught out a little bit too much. Uh, Gendry being chased out in a lot of situations. It's, they're going aggressive. They're trying to do something, but in the end, they they have to play a bit more passively. Now they have. I think they've foregone the strategy of trying just to kill Bebe because Bebe <laughs> has a guardian angel now. Bebe is a, a huge deal. Uh, normally, you, you don't consider Misfortune a lake made carry, but they have a lot of. They do have decent protection coming in from Anivia. Double uh, Phantom Dancer is acquired as well. Yeah, that's that's just from mobility, not going for Infinity the Edge, and especially for the fact that Misfortune, her uh, bullet time, does scale with AD very, very well, but not with attack speed. So this is all about the auto attacks. This is ignore the AOE damage, focus on just killing one target at a time, and. That Phantom Dancer, those Phantom Dancers are going to give her so much mobility, so much uh, dueling potential, and lifesteal too, a Bloodthirster. And it's going to be really hard to kill her in a 1v1 or 2v1. And they know this on TPA. They've made her someone who is survivable, but can still beat you in a 1 on 1. And that's something that, well, Kid just kind of lacking that right now because he did uh, not build Infinity Edge yet, does not have that much attack speed. And it's kind of showing. They just don't have that much damage because they built so much MR on Moscow 5. This is one of the things I love about when someone plays Elise. They get the magic penetration build, then they go for the utility between Shrelia's Reverie and the Frozen Heart. The survivability of the Guardian Angel, now potentially going for something on the Negatron Cloak. Could be an Abyssal Scepter to help out TPA's toys. It could be absolutely anything. Could be just going for, you know, another one of those Banshee's Veils or a uh, Null Magic Man's, I'm uh, uh, sorry, Quicksilver Sash. But it looks like they're going to initiate. There's the Bandit Shot down again. He's been evaporated from this fight. So no AD carry here for Moscow 5. Darian that's a leap strike away. Diamond Prox trying to get in here. Little Ball is dropping extremely low. Drawing that tower aggro. Looks like Darius is going to try to jump back down onto Stanley, but he has no HP at all. Looks a little bit of damage coming out here from Alex Each as my mouse completely uh, completely jerks out of uh, focus there. Alex he taking a lot of damage with the Frostbite. Has to Sonya's oh, Hourglass as Stanley rappels down on him. Dodges the bandage sauce but can't dodge death. TPA just completely collapse on him. All five members still alive. M5, two of their members down for at least a minute apiece. There we go with Darian trying to get back down on the toys. But toys, he still has the egg form up. He's not going to be able to go down as easily. Diamond Prox trying to focus in down as well. He's dropping really low but so is Diamond. Diamond Prox, is he going to fall? No, he is not yet. Mistake actually going to want to take down the tower. BB, Mistake, Little Balls and Toys, they're going to want to clean up the base of M5. One Nexus tower has gone down. Gosu Pepper now getting walled off by Toys. Has to flash over it. Toys actually taking a lot of the damage as well. Repel being used by Elise to escape from that one. Now the second Nexus tower goes down. Darian jumps into everybody. He's trying to save his they're team. Trying to zone. save the game. But no, TPA comes from behind. They take out M5 after such a dominant game. And Taipei Assassins go up 1-0 in this best of three. And when you say dominant game, they're still behind in gold. They picked up so many kills at the end there. They picked up three turrets just from the inhibitor, just from the Nexus. And Moscow 5, T it did not matter. TPA just held control of the game. They held the strength of their team. We saw them in team fights really focusing, really just kind of focusing them down. It was a great game from TPA because despite the fact that they had a gold disadvantage, despite the fact that they had a team where you wouldn't really consider misfortune to be the best late game carry, they really, really defended or really put a uh, Moscow 5 for trying to just exploit the fact that they had so little physical damage. And in the end, they, they were so effective in their team fights and their group presence. It was the grouping that really let them control that game. One of the things, too, is the fact you talked about the grouping. Moscow 5, they had complete Rambo syndrome that entire game. They had Corky in the bottom lane who was split pushing off at points in time. Yes, it granted them a tower advantage and it gave them secure objectives like Dragon, but it was one of the things that wound up leading to their downfall. Unfortunately for Darian, 0 5 in that game, I believe. You know, he was yeah, 0 4 in that game. So he wound up dying because he kept going out on his own. He would get caught out. His Guardian Angel would be popped and not be available for the next fight. He would wind up dying before he 
he acquired the guardian angel, actually probably one of the reasons he got the guardian angel is because they were able to focus him down so quickly despite Jax being Jax, having that trinity force acquired. He needed that little bit of extra tankiness in order to survive the taking comp from TPA. He just continually got caught out and then they had three men at Baron when they took the final dragon of the game. It was their fifth dragon of the game. All the dragons wound up going to M5 in this game. But they split off. Their AD carrying support were down on the bottom lane. Their jungler, their mid lane, and their top lane were dancing around Baron. Took a bit of poke damage from TPA. Also took the area of effect damage from Baron. Then when they tried to engage on Taipei Assassins, they came in from two different sides at two awkward angles. They tried to jump on the toys. They really couldn't. BB wound up getting a good bullet time across the Curse of the Side Mummy that hit three members of Moscow 5. Alex each went in, tried to get the Moonfall, tried to deal as much damage as possible. And unfortunately, it just wasn't enough because there's no team cohesion. They were too far split apart. It was their point in the fights where it was working because the Mumu couldn't hit that curse of the sad mummy. But with three of them split off and the AD carrying support being left by themselves, it just didn't work out anymore when TPA had the farm to take them out. I will say this so, though. Um, Alex each 19.6k gold. If they'd had just those moments, they never had the shine. They never had that moment where you're just like, they did it. There's their win. That's their thing. And because of that, we saw the results, really. But, I mean, it's it's fun to look at just some of these stats. 19.6k gold on Alex each. Uh, Genja was at 16.4k. And it's just, like, just looking at the stats. Can we, can we just check some out? Just yeah. for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. We'll pop yeah. back over. It's, it's fun to look at it because it's such a late game. It was a late game. Well, game, really. Almost an hour long. Yeah, almost an hour long. Not that much happened. It's because M5... I th they were just trying to farm it out, trying to wait for that really easy opening, but they never took that big risk. And the, when it was a big risk, it was usually someone on their own saying, I can do this, I can make it happen now. So they were both a combination of incredibly patient, but they weren't taking those chances. Sometimes you got to take that risk, sometimes you got to take that chance. And Moscow 5, they never really did it. It was such a weird game, too. The AD carries built so defensively, double Phantom Dancer being acquired by Misfortune for the mobility, rattling going for the big damaging items like Infinity Edge, or she did have a Last Whisper to her name, but she also wound up picking up a uh, Quicksilver Sash and a GA. That, that's a lot of defense. Corky and built Mercury Treads, he built a Guardian, Veil. a Banshee's Veil, no Guardian Angel actually being acquired, but he we should did actually, have the item slot. We should actually stop talking because we have to end the game number two oh, of yeah, this yeah. series. Teams should be setting up by now. Before so. that happens, though, we're going to take a quick commercial break guys tpa coming from behind taking one right from underneath m5 pulling the rug out from underneath them can m5 just kind of stabilize themselves in a mental state can they come back and take game number two force game number three or are the taipei assassins going to take a 2-0 victory over moscow five we're going to find out right after this